Hello and welcome to another video following on from the previous video about waveform traction and black hole. So this one here is also going to allow us to record what we hear in Jamulus back in traction waveform so that we can use it to remember rehearsal structures of songs and even to have just a record of a, a good jam. So this is black hole waveform to Jaminus with recording where we can add effects before hitting Jaminus, but we can also record the Jaminus mix back. I'm also going to give a couple of pointers about an additional effect I forgot to mention. So this is where we were before the routing on the Mac going into your computer via waveform to Jaminus. But what we're interested in today is how via audio MIDI setup, we can set a virtual device to point back from Jamulus to traction without causing a feedback loop. I'm not going to cover Jamulus multi-track, but just let's talk about it very quickly. Jamulus has a feature on server that you can use to have an individual web file for every person in the server. And then you can import that bunch of files back into Traction Waveform and do a proper mix of each individual track, or at least each individual channel in Jamulus. This, however, requires that you have access to the Jamulus server and that you can get the files from the server to your local machine. So I'm not going to cover that today, but we're going to go for the simple recording of a stereo feed from whatever you have in Jamulus back into Traction Waveform. The first thing we need to do is go into audio MIDI setup. So I press command space or some people say Apple space and type in audio and that will find me audio MIDI setup very quickly so i'm going to double click that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create an aggregate device so if i click on this little plus here create aggregate device i've now got a new device which is going to be a combination of two devices because i need two devices so my current sound card which is an h6 six inputs two outputs you might have less here and then i'm going to check black hole 16 channel and now i've got lots and lots of inputs and outputs if this window is too small, you might have the output channels hidden, so you might want to just make the window big enough. And what I'm going to do is use the labeling feature to make this a little bit more, a bit easier. And I'm going to call my input channels black hole one, black hole two. I'll click on the little white tag and then type in the labels for each. And on my output channels, I'm going to do the same black hole one, black hole two. BH3, BH4. So now I have the first four of my black hole input and output channels labeled. That gives me two stereo pairs. I'm going to open waveform and I'm going to click settings here. Go to audio devices. Previously we had black hole 16 channel and H6. What I'm going to do now is choose aggregate device for both input and output. And we're going to see our black hole devices that we set up here. What I'm going to do is click on BH1 and use treat a stereo channel pair and also BH3 and 4 treat the stereo pa channel pair. This is just going to make things easier as I'm not going to have to use as many tracks for my inputs and outputs. So I've got black hole 1 and 2 3 and 3 and 4 on my input and output as stereo pairs. Plus to open it a new project I'm going to call that Jamulus Record. I can go to the edit here I can see my tracks quickly set that up how I did before. Track one, I need to set my inputs. Track one, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose input five. That's my microphone. So that's the input from my regular sound card. We can see it moving here. I'm going to give you a tip on a plugin, which I didn't mention in the last video, which is called George Young's W1 limiter. I'm going to set the threshold to this to about minus four minus 0.4 and the ceiling at minus 0.2 and check adaptive release. That's all I need to do. This is just going to stop the, the, the signal from ever overloading. And I make sure that's last in the list. So if the list was in a different order like this, I just click on George Young's word volume to drag it to the bottom, and make sure it's there last on the list. Here on my output where I've got default, I'm going to click this and I'm going to choose black hole one and two. My output's going to go to black hole one and two. Okay, and now I can launch Jamulus and show you we're working rather like we did before. Here's Jaminus. I'm going to click on my settings and I'm going to this time make sure my device for input and output is on aggregate device. So in my case it's right at the end of the list in aggregate device, out aggregate device. My inputs are going to come from black hole one and black hole two. 
that's to match with the output from waveform input to Geminus. For the output, I don't want to send it back to the same place, so I'm going to use black hole 3 and black hole 4. Note that I'm using audio channel stereo, I can also use mono in stereo out if I'm just singing in a microphone, that's probably if I only have one channel, that's the best one to use, but use stereo out so you can hear stereo from everyone else unless your connection is, is really too slow. If I click connect and go to a server, I will now enable input monitoring here and I should see now my signal coming into Jaminus, which I can indeed. And one thing I can do to test this a little bit, so I use this pan and I pan myself completely to the left. I can actually see only the left channel working here. And if I pan myself completely to the right, I can see myself on the right channel. And I can just double click to pan myself back to the middle and I can see my signal normal. And I can obviously affect the level I'm going into Jaminus with this fader here. I can't hear anything coming back to me at the moment. What I need to do now is set up track two to have an input, this time a black hole three and four. And as we can see, that's stereo already and that's coming from Jaminus itself. I can't hear it until I set my default, my output here to output one and two, which is my regular sound card. And I also check this one for record. So now I can hear myself. If you can't hear yourself, do check on here that you have live input monitoring. So now I'm coming in through track one, out black hole one and two, into Jaminus. Jaminus is then outputting to black hole three and four, which is on track two, and it's going to output one and two. So I'm actually keeping the whole chain through waveform, like in my diagram earlier. If I want to record what's going on, all I need to do is to hit record, and that will start recording both tracks, actually. The track two will be the sound from Jaminus. So there I've recorded something. If I now press stop and I go and look at this screen here, I will see two tracks that have been recorded. Now the first track here is just my microphone. If I delete this track here by just clicking on it so it's selected and pressing delete, this track here will be my recording. So if I now go here and I've got controls like a tape recorder and I click on this one here to rewind to the start and press play, and you should hear me recording twice. Both tracks actually. The track two will be the sound from Jaminus. Press stop. And so that is the recording that came from Jaminus. And that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope it was useful. Don't hesitate to ask in the comments if you have any queries. And um, catch up on Jaminus World Jam on Facebook.